All right, everyone, welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Pistolka, and man, am I excited today because I've got machining legend Matt Goosey with me here today. Welcome, Matt. Well, welcome, Damon. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been looking forward to this for about a month now because we're uh, metal guys or have metal yeah. backgrounds, so it's going to be exciting. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome, dude, because... Uh, your, your background is, is, is really cool. I like talking about that. You're a Midwest guy there and there in Wisconsin and it, man, it's just good stuff because Hey, every time we talk, we, it has to come back to the Packers. It always comes back something with the Packers. <laughs> yeah. See the hats right there. <laughs> so we're ready to go with that. And, and B you're just an interesting guy. I mean, when, when you look outside of, outside of machining, you're you're a uh, a referee for both is it football and basketball? Yeah, football, uh, high school and college, and then basketball just high school. Yeah, yeah. So, because is it didn't I see you like Division three football certified for Division three yep. football coaching or I mean refereeing? Yep. That's that takes a lot of a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, everybody <laughs> thinks it's just uh, a little couple hours in the afternoon on a Saturday it's no it's it's a minimum of 15 hours a week yeah yeah it's crazy how much time that I mean because just I mean I just used to mess around just umpiring baseball games for little league and, and I mean just messing around with that's a lot of work and then then when you look at and then talk to other uh referees and and things like that it's 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 a lot of work it's a lot of work. And as you move up, that's why I saw division three. I know when you get in the NCAA, it's tougher, a lot tougher than high school. And then when you, you know, you move up in the divisions within the NCAA and then into the professional, it gets even, even tougher as you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's knowing the rules in the rule book all year long, watching video all year long. Cause you just, what F and what happens and you just know, you never know when that's going to happen. You got to be ready and be prepared. Yeah. Yeah. I've never been good at that because I get too excited with the game. It doesn't matter. I don't care if it's girls softball, you know, people playing marbles. I, I get excited in the game and I can't be a good, a good umpire referee because of that. Yeah. That, that was the hardest part for me to get over. Don't watch the game. You know, you got zones and areas you got to watch. And just that's the number one thing. Don't watch the ball watch, especially in basketball. You, you watch your zones and, keep it there and just keep cool and calm. Don't yeah. Let emotions. So <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that would, that would be, that would be trying at times. I'm sure. Cause Ooh. you get some, get some coaches that really are, are push your limits. I'm sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. You get an earful <laughs> once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Man. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Cause I remember in, in just in the little bit that I, like I said, if I was a little bit in little league, there's, there's a certain age when, when us as, as males, we we get to that age with kids and it, it we get we're a little bit more boisterous i would say than we are as as we on either side of that <laughs> i think yeah. and uh it's interesting so but you're but that that's cool because you know that you have to in not only are you working on machining uh, around the year you're working on something else that keeps you both physically active because that's the the other thing i've had friends that were high school uh referees and they would tell me about that just the running that you have to do just to stay in shape to do that and you're staying in shape because not only are you a referee in in football and basketball you're also an avid cyclist yep that's that's probably been the best thing for me for the last 30 years it, it it's just it's the physical part yeah it keeps you in shape and stuff but it's also the mind and the, the mental part because after a hard day of work or a hard day of officiating or something yeah you gotta, just got to get your mind cleared out and yeah. oh is that, is that refreshing because where i ride you know if i see three cars on a 50 mile bike ride that's that's about the average where some people in the big city it's like five cars and two blocks yeah <laughs> yeah, so yeah. fortunate yeah so how many miles do you ride your bike a week just um, a given week at this time of year. Yeah, I put about 300, three to 400 miles a week on. Wow. 300. And so 
but it's you know back in the day when i had the old steel bike chromoly frame the thing weighed like 25 pounds nowadays yeah. bikes are 15 pounds and aerodynamic and the older i get it you know i need that advantage so you got to put a little money into your bike so you can keep up with yeah <laughs> well you've got quite a bike there's no doubt about it i've seen the seen the pictures of it and it is it is something and and you're right we've got i was actually talking to a a, a client of mine over the weekend he had a charity event that we did and uh he's an avid cyclist and he was explaining the he's got i don't know if you do this got four or five different kinds of bikes because he likes to ride trails in the road and and it, one's for the rain and and out out here we have to have one for the rain <laughs> but uh as a special ones just just for really unique situations yeah up here we have one for snow <laughs> <laughs> does it have a little ski in the front no it's just wide tires i think mine yeah. are four and three quarter inches wide all right what about three pounds of pressure in them five oh. whatever it depends on the it's more about tire pressure in the winter than it is any time else yeah i'm sure i'm sure so you you've been in machining a little while yeah a little bit a little bit <laughs> you you i was i was reading more about the background from of uh mrs machine and about how your your dad roger started it in 1986 and shortly thereafter in 1989 you you started with him and you guys have been really just tearing it up even you've, you've been tearing it up your dad uh went on to to found an educational program in the local high school, which is super cool. We can talk about that a little bit because I think it's that's really, really incredible. And and then you at the helm have just continued on and and really built it up into into the some of the things that, you know, when I met you, I think last year or or, or early yeah, last year, something like that. Uh, but uh, you've been recently interviewed by Fox News and on a lot of other places about helping bringing awareness around the employment uh, challenges, the recruiting challenges in the, in the manufacturing machining industry and, and a lot of other stuff. So I'm really excited to talk about this stuff. So, so tell me a little bit about how you decided that you wanted to be in machining and, and kind of those early days working with your dad in the, in the, in the business. All right. Now it's my turn to speak. Um, actually, you know, when I was growing up in high school, you know, my dad, my dad had a, we were like a hobby farm. We had cows and, and he had a, he was a machinist and I always thought yeah. of, well, that's kind of cool what he does. And he'd always tell me. So when uh, we sold the farm back and I was in eighth grade, ninth grade, they, uh, we moved to town and um, my dad worked at a machine shop. And I worked at a gas station and in the summer I worked in the farms helping hay and stuff. So I had that, mm -hmm. I had that farm background. And then one night I just, he started to ask, they need someone to clean the floors. And I said, well, that's kind of cool. I can do that after school. So that's what I did. And I did that for a year. And then my junior year, I was going to be a senior. Um, that second shift, they asked me if I could run a, uh, Leblon Makino horizontal machining center. And I'm like, uh, you know, <laughs> and things are going all kinds of directions. And I'm like, I can just push the broom. And then the guy goes, oh, it's real easy. You just do this, this, and this, and you hit that green button. Oh, okay. Well, I'll give it a shot. So I did. And I was making these little ball valves. I can remember today, and I was putting a keyway in them. And I was, had the little whirly gir, burr thing. I deburred it and filed it. And hey, this is kind of cool. I kind of like this. And so I ended up doing that for like the whole month of July. Wow. And, and you know, I was like, wow, this is kind of cool. So that year I took a... Um, a program at the high school we had like a little cnc plastic machine and i learned a little bit about mg code programming and then there was an old guy in that second shift that started telling me what this m code thing does and this g code thing does because it was all greek to me yeah and so my, the guy that owned the place kind of seen that and he said hey i'll sign you up for tech school for free you're gonna pay for my school oh, okay I'm, I'm i'm in you know so we signed up well, and then it happened in my senior year, he ended up getting killed in a car accident. And was like, oh man. And the family was from Chicago and and he, he he liked to spend money and he didn't have a lot of it. So the place was basically gonna go bankrupt or shut. Oh. So, so they came in and said, okay, let's close the doors. We're done, get yourself out of here. So we had all this expensive material like Hasselite, Stellite and Monel. And I remember throwing it in my dad's truck and 
put it in his garage because they really wanted it out. And my dad was friends with the customers and they just asked my dad one day if he could finish machining it. And there were just some shafts or some grooves and chamfer. To this deal of salt bend lathe that you put on your bench top, to this day, I have no idea how he held the tolerances on there. He had like 12 indicators going every direction, which way. I remember him buying all these indicators. And at that time, I just thought it was like a gas gauge, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Now I do. But so he did it. And then they did a good job. And they asked him, hey, would you want to continue making these parts? And that's when my dad, the light went off of my dad's head. It's like, maybe I should start a company. So I'm a senior in high school. I'm, I'm graduated now, so I'm going to go to tech school. I signed up. I ended up paying for it. Yeah. And he started it, and he wanted to be a woman-owned business because that was like a government thing we always did. Yeah. So that's what that's where the that's where the MRS comes from. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't stand for masculinely smart or anything like that. <laughs> we actually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's there's been there's been abbreviations behind yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, ooh, yeah. More, eh, but oh man, it, it's it's meant to be a woman-owned company. Um, we used to have a girl named. We hired a girl part-time, Sharon. So it was used to be thought was Matt Roger and Sharon, but that that really wasn't the case. So, anyways, we uh, my dad started it. My mom was a president, and the way we went, I went to tech school and got my degree. And dad, I'm out of here. There's nothing in this town. And then yeah. I moved to Hay about two hours north of here, back in the boondocks. I loved to fish and hunt at the time. And I got a job there. met my wife. And when it started happening is I co started coming home on the weekends, helping them on a Saturday. Well, I was working 50 hours there and, you know, 10 to 8, eight to 10 hours here. And yeah, I, I, that got old. Yeah. And, and <laughs> so I finally, finally hit my head and asked my wife to marry me. And she said, yes. So I was very blessed that she said, yes. <laughs> Um, so we got married in the summer of 89 and the day, my dad, we got married up there and my dad come up to me and said, Hey, when you're done, you're going to come work for me in like next month. Aren't you? I go, no, I'm happy up here. No, you're going to come work for me. Well, that was in July, summer of July. So after him pushing me and I said, all right, I'll come work for you. And it was really a blessing in disguise because what happened, the reason, the main reason was my dad had suffered a major heart attack. Mm -hmm. And I mean, he was clinically dead. I mean, they, they were done. He was like, you're done. You're, you're. And they gave decided that's another whole story. And I'll get goosebumps and probably break down crying if I told it. But they, he actually came back to life. And so then I knew, OK, he's 42 years old, massive heart attack. And the outcome wasn't very good. And it's like, oh, I got to I, I, I better come back. So I decided to come back. And, you know, I didn't know if I was going to we're going to be in business for a year or two. I didn't. You know, I'm only 21 years old. Yeah. Damon. And I, yeah. I, I'm a machinist, barely machinist, you know, I, I still, I, I didn't, I could hardly machine anything. I mean, I just knew how to measure something and kind of, so we started doing that and, you know, he helped me and we got busy and I remember back, I just remember one day I just shut my machine off. I still have the, I still have the museum here at MRS. It's, we got our web lathe and a Bridgeport mill. That's my museum. I will never get rid of those pieces of equipment. And I just shut it off one day and my dad says, what are you doing? I said, where are we going with MRS? I'm happy. Just get back to work. And he just, he liked to poke the stick. And I said, no, dad, I'm going to grow it. You know, I guess uh, I'm young. I come here to grow it, not just to stay in here and, you know, follow your footsteps. And he says, all right, I'll back you. So I started knocking on doors and mm -hmm. I got, I, I got the phone hung up on me. Who are you? Mm -hmm. you know, we we didn't, didn't have cell phones. So you got to remember that. That's all. Yeah, yeah. It, so I literally had to hop in the car. I remember getting this big book, trying to get names and cold calling and, People didn't have time of day for you. But actually, one time I had a, a tool salesman that came in and said, hey, you need to call this place. I think you guys would be a good fit. So I hopped in the car and went up there. And yeah, we were a good fit. And we started doing work. And then fortunately, my dad found somebody at the same time. So all of a sudden, we went from nothing to like, no, we got to hire somebody. And we got to buy more machines. And of course, my mom's yeah. like, we're in my mom's garage. So we ended up moving out of the garage because my mom pretty much forced us out of there. Yeah. And, <laughs> moved downtown and you know we ended up hiring four or five people and that was going great when it was this company was a defense contractor and that was the time of the desert storm was going on yeah, yeah. and they received a um a contract to make some um uh, bomb parts for the b-52 mm -hmm. bombers the ones that they just all kinds of them fly out so we actually quoted two parts and we received the order and the, i remember the army guy coming down and auditing us and he walked in our little shop and 
He's like, where are you making the parts? And I said, right here. And he goes, oh, no, you're not. He says, you got 30 days to clean this mess up. Because, you know, what was 5S? What was 6 Sigma? Yeah. What was all that stuff? Yeah. You know, it was just a cluttered mess. So when we we had 30 days to scramble. And we scrambled and and we we put the machines in there and we got it up and running. Very stressful time in my life. And I ended up, you know, I ended up taking parts of the cities in the middle of the night, in the morning, during the day. We had hired people. And we made it happen, and I guess that kind of made a name for ourselves, and that just led to more work, word of mouth. And I can remember going to one of my other customers, and I got all dressed up, suit and tie, and I walked in there because it was a big corporation, and he was like, "Who the heck are you?" You know, and and I, I get presented myself. I brought some parts in and some paperwork, and showed him what we did, and and you know, the first words out of their mouth was, "You know, we love your presentation, but." You know, you're only 22 or 23 years old. Can we trust you? And and so I'm like, okay, I, you can. And I did. You know, I had to. Yeah. I mean, that's why I always tell people, if you're going to go into business for yourself, there's three things. First of all, you know, I guess you got to love what you're doing, first of all. Yeah. But the three things you got to do is you got to be ready. Be ready to jump in this three to five years, 24-7, 365. Yep. You got to risk everything financially. Yep. Put it all out there because capital equipment ain't cheap. And your family, you got to get together your family and say, hey, I won't, you won't be seeing much of me. You got to make sure they're on because, you know, if mommy ain't happy, ain't nobody happy. And and roll up your sleeves and get busy. And that's really what we did. And so during that yeah. time, you know, during that time, my dad had like, I think I counted three surgeries he had with his heart. And so I was there for that. And it, it was nice for him. He knew I was there. Yeah. And so um yeah that's kind of how we got started and then i just knew one thing that I, I needed to hire smarter people in me i just i wasn't the smartest kid in the block i wasn't no 4.0 student i barely got through school you know but the reason i did is i just couldn't sit in the classroom and look at the wall i mean i just bored yeah. me to death and all my teachers that's not all of them but a couple one of my teachers came up to me one day and said you know what matt you know this this little technical area that's for you because you're never going to make it college you're probably not going to be pretty successful in life and, and I, I looked at him and i said okay thank you uh, and i deserved it i probably deserved everything he said but you know what that's stuck in the back of my head and that and then that's why i that just drives me today it still does drive me today i just yeah i'm not, I'm not taking no for an answer yeah and so that's kind of it kind of drove me to the where I kind of got today, but it ain't what I did. I mean, I gotta use get the word I because it's it's not me, Damon. It's 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 the people that work for me and it's the people that help me. Yeah. And someday I'm gonna write a book and I'm gonna start putting names in there. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just have an awesome team. You know, I I can't praise these people enough to what they do for me. You know, I just kind of stay out of the way you now. <laughs> let yeah. the place let the place do it because they're better than me. They're smarter than me. And That's. That I think that's that's one of the changes that people don't really understand as as you're building the business because you're so close. Like you, you were machining in the beginning and you were making those parts and and you were figuring out who was going to do what in, at a certain time and making that transition to where others take over pieces of that and continue to take over more of that uh, so that you can continue with the vision of of building the business. It's very hard to make that change. Yeah, it is. It so what really drove me into that, um, and well, 2013 I lost my dad. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm kind of jumping ahead here a little bit, but me and my dad are like best friends. They're like, yeah, you know, we fall, did we fight? Oh yeah, because we were both machinists <laughs> and we both <laughs> we were thought a little different. Yeah, but, because by the time I learned the computer side of it, and he didn't really learn the computer side of it he just he knew how to make things manually yeah but then there's a the computer side of it where you can take a little bigger depth of cutter a little you don't have to worry about chips flying and hitting in the face and stuff like that and he just fought we fought about how to hold on to it how to how to how to work hold it how to make the part but you know at the end of the day we always called each other at night and said we're sorry tomorrow's a yeah. day and so I might, I lost my dad. It was just like, you know, you could prepare for it too. I mean, it was all these little false, false alarms, cry whoops, you know, you go uh -huh. to the hospital and yada, yada, yada. Finally one night, I remember being at a career fair in March and my mom called me and said, Hey, your dad's, 
it doesn't have any, you have hours. You better get down here in a hurry. So I sped down there and I went to the hospital. Here he is sitting there eating ice cream. And I'm like, what in the world? And I'm like, geez, you know, get another false alarm. And actually, 24 hours later, he passed away. And uh, then it, it, it just hit me. It, yeah. I mean, I wasn't prepared for it. And so that's when I decided to, okay. The people i couldn't even walk into this place damon i just yeah an emotional cry yeah and I didn't yeah know what to do. basically sat in the chair at home for three months and of course everybody's thinking i need help psych psychiatrist yeah. and counseling and i said i know i don't need that but i had a lot of people come to me called me talk me through things and finally one day i made it down here and, mm -hmm. and the place was singing and i'm like wow <laughs> these people stepped up and and I was just amazed. At this day, I'm still amazed. And, I, and that's when I said, you know, I'm going to pay these people back somehow, some way, in some form. I have to because if it wasn't yeah. for them, I, I wouldn't have it. So that's when I started doing the, if you jumped ahead about three or four more years, I started giving 40% of the profit back to the people here. That's because they stay here. And this place yeah. is just, theirs just as much mine. And and that's, that's where it generated from. Yeah. Um, yeah. But. Um, so that, that's that's special to see your the people there um like you said step up and do that and you yeah. wouldn't see that in mer very many places and <clears throat> it goes to show first of all that you your father um really ran a good business and cared for people in the first place and that because they wouldn't have they wouldn't have they just would have stood around and watched everything go to hell if they wouldn't have really cared yep. and and then what you've done since then to help uh share the gratitude for that help is is awesome and i think that's you know it's it's probably why you're winning the awards that you do it's probably wh why your your business continues to produce great parts for many different people and they come back wanting more because you do a good job yeah um, so yeah it's interesting how the bad times can drive some good things. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I've had it. It's it has a bit of tropical paradise. I mean, there's just as many bad stories as there's oh, good yeah. stories. You know, you know, yeah. businesses. I can remember in one week I lost uh, ninety percent of my customers in one week. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, whew, that don't make you sleep at night. But, yeah, yeah. So has the. Has the type of customers changed an awful lot over the years? I mean, have you switched many industry or is it is it really pretty much stayed that defense uh, kind of thing throughout? Uh, no, it's it's changed. You know, defense, the woman the the government thought there just wasn't didn't seem to be money in it. And yeah. then you started hearing these people buying parts from China and then putting their yeah. names on it. And I think that still goes on today, especially replacing parts. People yeah. are doing some, I don't know. They're, they're not doing things right, and I, I just said, I, yeah. I don't, want, I don't want nothing to do with that. Yeah, I'm out of there. So we just, just went back to the commercial stuff, and you know, stuff that you know, you know, uh, today you know, we got in, I got in oil and gas real heavily, right around the turn of twenty two oh one, and I got my probably got, I got a little, little too heavy in it because you know, I, I always say you can't measure it can't manage it and yeah oh I, oh I could measure it but i was just looking at the bank account instead of the, actually trying to manage it yeah and, you know, 015 that kind of hit us a little bit but yeah um and all food processing you know food plower that's kind of big right now aerospace we got to that by mistake um that's <laughs> i i had no idea how i'd get into aerospace but we did and i guess we got pretty good at it because everybody wants you know we, we're good at complex stuff it, yeah, I got, I got a team of young kids here. They're 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 not really scared of anything. They'll yeah. take it on. They'll, they'll get it done. They don't care. And the more challenging, the the better. They the more they like it. But you know, then we got the people that just want to make parts, and yeah, they do a good job at it. And and they once it's proven out, they can set it up and do it themselves. And yeah, so you, you the, now this is one thing, and we'll get a little little technical as much as I can get. <laughs> But because okay. I started, I started out, you know, literally about the same time, my machining experience in, in a tool room and in an injection molding company. And I think it was 1980 had to be six, something like that. And uh, it was before CNC really was popular. And I was lucky enough to put the first uh, 
cam at that time cam or you know program in there it was old master cam you know and then you, we we did the started doing that stuff but the you talk about complex and the complex in the in the when you started in the late 80s to complex now talk about the change in that yeah i tell people here you know we we get a partner like challenging oh, i don't know if we can do that and i said remember five years i go i'll go grab a part i got parts laying in my display case or i got a drawing i'll pull up and i'll go out there and i'll put it on the table and conference room and i'll say remember this part yeah that's easy i'm like ah, let's go back five years remember how we said we couldn't do that ah <laughs> you know yeah what technology how you can measure things and how you know our five axis you just you program not you put punch a number in you know a 22 degree angle and boom it's a 22 degree angle it's not putting you building a fixture plate an indexer and you know sign bars none of that that's all gone yeah. you yeah. know tr trigonometry i mean i i hope i don't have to ever do it because i think i forgot it all it's yeah. just just you go find the model or go draw it up in cam but no the you know the tolerance is also tight you know back in the day if you could hold a thou and a lathe or two that was pretty tight and now two tenths is like you know that's like the norm in <laughs> most of the parts wow. we do wow. but no that also brings in more challenges now you got to have a temperature controlled you know when we first started out we didn't have air conditioning shop we didn't have yeah. ventilation we didn't have chillers on our coolant now you know when you start holding those tolerances all that comes into play yeah because temperature moves it that much almost. Yeah. <laughs> you know the best way I put it, because some people don't understand metals move and stuff. And, you know, we have a railroad that runs through town. And I, from the summer to the winter, that thing over a mile shrinks three inches from the winter or grows three inches in the, the summer and shrinks three inches in the in the winter. So that's how much steel moves. And yeah. you know, just 10 degrees is an aluminum is like could be a tenth or two. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize that either until one of the machining companies that I managed later on in my career, we did, I think the envelope was like 10 feet by four feet by three feet. And we would do, some of our stuff was like four inch aluminum and 16, 18 inches wide and, you know, eight feet long. And I didn't realize that you had to actually skin both sides of the material to kind of let it relieve stresses before you started actually machining anything out of it and you know just it's strange stuff like that that you only material it moves it just moves you you it's crazy how you have to do that and then you know it's just like your grandma's cake you know <laughs> you got the recipe but if my grandma makes it or your grandma makes it it isn't quite the same it's yeah. close it's all the ingredients are the same but it well, you can machine a job 10 times and that 11th time you get it from a different mill and it, oh, I, oh well, geez, it's horrible. Yeah. <laughs> All kinds of problems. So, yeah. So what, are, so you've, you've talked about the tolerances have gotten a lot, a lot tighter because of the, and of course the, 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 the ways that you set up machines, but what are some of the things that you see now that's really changing that you go, man, that is going to be cool in the, in the machining industry as, as that really comes to, comes to fruition and starts really working. Oh, uh, additive manufacturing has kind of went a long ways. That's, you know, we, uh, you can machine something and all of a sudden you can hit program it to come in and add some ink and to steel just in a certain area. We don't have to machine the whole part. 3D printing, that, that's coming a long ways. It, we're not really into 3D printing. Yeah. Um, that That's, you know, I don't think, you know, 3D printers, well, definitely going to, is going to, or 3D printing metal is going to come up fast. And it's going to be a thing in the future, but I still don't know if it's going to be fast enough to print out a couple thousand parts. In yeah. That kind of fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. The, as far as cutting tool wise, I eyes, you know, two I eyes go back to is um, when them helical meals came out or I mean you you take a full width of the flute length and you just start taking five thousandths and I call it peel meal and you really peel it like a banana. You just mm -hmm. really fast where before, you know, I used to take a big depth of cut just real slow and beat the crap out of the machine. That that's amazing. I mean, that, that takes let alone does it take time off the part, but the tool life. I mean, I used to go through end mills like in coffee cans full. And yeah. now I go the only meal lasts a month. <laughs> you know? Wow. That, that's amazing and yeah you know, 
and hydraulic holders and shrink fit holders. And we didn't have all that back in their nineties, you know? Yep. So that, that's, that's, and then the coatings, you know, whoever thought of a coating, putting a coating on a tool would really, and that just the coatings alone, I, I can't, I'm, I'm a DMF guy. I love design for manufacturing. Mm -hmm. I just, I see a part. The first thing I want to do is how can we make it better? Yeah. How can we, how can we cut costs? That's, that's just me. That's, that's what drives me. That's why I like to go for bike rides. I like that part. Yeah. And that's what goes in my head. And, you know, I had this one customer, he was high speed steel. And they're like, what the heck? You're still high D speed steel in it. I said, let's put a coating on there. And, and they were taking these tool blocks pretty hard and EDM. And, well, you know, EDM is like a hundred dollars an inch to get EDM. Yeah. And yeah. I said, just take that sucker. We'll machine it out of a billet and we'll heat treat it. And we'll throw a coating on there. And it, that part went from, there were like 30 inches of cut to that thing lasts like six months now. And oh, wow. and they didn't like it very much because they couldn't sell replacement parts. So yeah. it, it, <laughs> it, it, that's the kind of stuff I like, I like to do anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and you talk about the things like that. When you said additive manufacturing and then machining something and putting some material, a different type of material right where you want it, I, I just can't even imagine. That boggles my mind, the, the possibilities by doing that. Oh, yeah. I mean, wow. that's, yeah, that's just like cladding in the oil and gas industry. You know, you used to rough machine it. You have to send it out and get it cladded and then come back in and machine it. Well, that's three extra processes. But now yeah. you can, if you can do that right in the same setup, oh. And, oh, and, do yeah. it, and do it overnight. I mean, that's. I gotta oh, wow. It. That would be something. That would yeah. be something. Well, wow. it, it already, yeah, it, it is something already. So just. Yeah. Um, just get in, in mainstream mainstream usage and and it could it is amazing i mean all the way you talk about 3d printing you know i think it was a couple of years ago now they built that car out of a 3d printer built a car or the body or whatever they did the whole thing and were able to roll it and you know it's just those kind of things are going to change the way at least as you said it might not be for the production but what you conceptually can think of and and make is going to be a lot different yeah, I mean, just yes. to take a model and hand it to your customer, and yeah. the concepts. That's what, that's what we like about three D print. You know, before we fixture and even you know how we measure things in our CMM, you can three D print something just to hold on to it. Let alone three yeah. D three D print it before how you see how you can machine it. You know, so that, yeah. that's just crazy stuff. Yeah. Wow. So when you think back and you go back into, you know, just learning what, uh, you know, what the first time you hooked a computer into the into the machine now it's they are they are part of the network they they talk back and forth to the network and and everything like that as well right yeah you know we have computers in all our cells so you know pretty much paperless yeah as much as we can be and you know i back in the early 90s if you would have told me that i thought you're crazy yeah <laughs> but i just it's saving the process and that tribal knowledge so if somebody leaves or you don't make that part for three years you have everything right there you have a document you have process sheets pictures inspection sheets um the plan yeah. how to make it it's all there the programs are saved that's yeah. that's that's I mean, it's you, valuable stuff yeah everybody's pretty much doing that nowadays yeah but it's it's good though to be able to to see the industry moving forward and 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 where it, where it's come from so you can hopefully not repeat mistakes as much uh and but now this year it's been interesting with with everyone that you know we all hear in the uh, news about how covid's affected you know all these industries and one of the things that i see almost across the board in manufacturing yeah it's affected the industry but not like people think manufacturing in general has been going right through and can't find any people to work in the factories now to, to help them produce the parts. And this is something we talked about many times this year. And honestly, it's, it's I believe it's why you got interviewed on Fox news too. Wasn't it this year about, about the, the problem with recruiting and, or hiring good people. Yeah. That first of all, I'm still amazed some kid from a small town in rural Wisconsin could be making national news that I would, <laughs> I, mean, 
I would have never, never dreamt of that. I mean, to this day, I'm still like, wow, you know, but you know, I know I have a, I think I have a story to tell. That's what everybody tells me. I have a good story yeah. to tell. And I wouldn't be able to and do what I do because of people like you, Damon and Sam Gupa. I mean, you guys get, you brought me out of my shell and I guess I'll go back to 2007 when I won the American Machinist Award. <laughs> I won this award and they came in and toured me and, and, uh, and they said, Oh, by the way, you got to come down to our conference in Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, sure. I'll be happy. Oh, but you got to speak for an hour. And I looked at him was like, I, I couldn't speak. I already talk on the phone, let alone speak in front of a bunch of people. And, yeah. uh, so I got notes and I practiced and boy, I, I got in the plane. I got in the plane, flew down there and I was so nervous. I had no clue what I was going to do. And all I remember this guy telling me, um, when you got 10 minutes to go, I'm going to stand up. And so you better hurry up and finish up. Okay. So I got up there and I had my notes and I started talking and what, what felt like 10 minutes, all of a sudden this guy in the back room stands up and I'm like, what the heck is he standing up so early for? Back of my mind, I'm like, so I kept talking and all of a sudden he's going like this. And the next thing I know, it was an hour. Yeah. <laughs> and I had no idea what I talked about, but apparently I talked, that broke me out of my shell because if, I could do that in front of a bunch of strangers. I figured I could maybe do it in front of a bunch of people like I did today. Yeah. And, and when I did the Fox News interview, I had no idea what they're going to ask me. They, I remember right before, about 30 seconds before we went live on air, Liz comes on and I go, hey, Liz, what are you going to ask me? She goes, well, I guess we'll find out in about 30 seconds, won't we? Okay. So if I can do that, I can, you know, live on <laughs> <national> TV. <laughs> I don't know what they're going to ask me. The rest is, the rest is easy. And, yeah. and it, that really helped me in officiating, you know, it, it just keeps you cool and calm. And yeah, I guess, I guess that all helped me too. But yeah. So anyways. Yeah. So you look at, you look at the, the challenges of hiring people. You're, you're, do you, is it just that, that you don't think that people are considering uh, machining or manufacturing as a career choice or do you think it's just there's less people that are interested in it um well it's kind of all of above you know if i had that million dollar i could answer that truthfully and have that more on i'd probably be sitting in a hawaii beach right now but yeah it's a lot it's a lot of things really it's you know back in the 70s in wisconsin we had 2.1 kids per household today we have 1.3 Oh, so now, so now you're one one less person per household. Well, how many families you got? Um, in our 40 here locally, in our, our school district of 42 schools, we have a thousand less seniors graduating today than we did wow. 10 years ago. So that's wow. a thousand less. Yeah, it's a thousand less students. And, you know, I last week I asked around to everybody I talked to just a question of the week. And I like to do that. So my question of the week is everybody's saying, don't get wrong, the $300 extra doesn't help but i ask people how many people do you know that are sitting home getting 300 dollars? I, I bet you i i asked about over 200 people damon and only one two people could tell me that they knew somebody that was sitting at home so i, I just we don't have the people and the, the i think a lot of this work what harry mosler did came back to america and we just got kind of we're kind of caught with our pants down to be honest with you and you know <sighs> To getting kids in school, that, that didn't help the last 10 years because everybody said a four-year college or you're a loser, just like me. They told me if I went to, I'm going to be a loser. And so that mentality had to change. And that we've made, I think all of us manufacturers have made great progress in the last five years. I'm seeing a lot of cool things in schools locally and nationally. Okay. And, all, and if you things like we're doing at Cardinal Manufacturing. And that's, and I tried to start my own school back in, 2000, you know, and I, I failed at it. And I went to the fast food restaurants and I, cause I thought, you know, they, they didn't have a career path and I just thought they were good people. And I failed six years, six months into it. They're all gone. And what did I do wrong? And that's when I met Craig Krakowski from a Cardinal. And he told me, Hey, I want to start a job shop up in high school. And I looked at him I'm like, Ooh, I want to get, they just got goosebumps talking to him. I want this guy. I'm, I want to be on that guy's team. And, you know, like, like the Packers, you know, we got Aaron Rodgers and you want to be on his team. <laughs> I, I had to throw that in there. Yeah. <laughs> if he plays so, this year. If he plays. Yeah. That's the question. But yeah. So, so Craig got a job at over here to Levi Strom and 
he called us up and told us and he came and visited and my dad hey what do you need my dad always said one hand's for giving and one's for receiving and yeah oh my gosh my dad had half the shop given to him and all their tools and like whoa whoa dad we got the cart in front of the horse here just have to hold on but you know like i said if those kids go through that program and don't go to college or go to something else besides manufacturing. That's great. You know, that's something now they don't go to college and for manufacturing. I think what I want to do and waste a bunch of money, but yeah. you know, we're getting students out of there. And now that we've done that, we got other school districts in it and it's successful and it works. It, you know, like I said, it creates revenue for the school, for the program and for the students. Kids are getting paid to go to high school. I, if I was at me in school, I'd be on, I'd be going to school every day. Yeah, exactly. And, and, you know, and people, are eyes are opening up, you know, bring people into your shop, show them what you do. When you start showing them a part that goes into a medical tool and what it does, that shows interest. You start showing a part what goes down three miles down in the ground for drilling oil and gas, or you make a little chip or something that goes into a airplane or something, or a little yeah. bracket that, yeah. that people don't understand what's behind those closed doors. And once they see that, and then you start telling the salary. It was yeah. funny. I, I had this insurance guy in here that wanted to give me my um my insurance quote for next year, and he started talking about workman's comp and salaries. And he says, "Oh, you guys make about thirty there? Hmm, no, you make about forty. And I go, "No, do you make about fifty? No, do you make about 60? And he goes, "Bye. If I buy this conversation, I may be working for you." <laughs> well, so, it's 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 a it's a fact. It's a fact of manufacturing. Is the skilled people get paid very well. Yeah, that's what that's the most underlying thing that people don't under, understand. Yeah. You know? And yeah. that's the thing I try to get out in the schools. And I just, you got to educate people. And, you know, yeah. like I said, back in 07, 08, every, all the schools closed out there, got rid of the, uh, we don't need tech ed, you know, we don't have yeah. money for it because it's heavy capital equipment. Oh, yeah. And they started selling it or just pushing it back in a corner. And they thought service and computers, that's, that's, you know, you're going to be fixing and working on a computer the rest of your life. And that's not, not the case. Mm -hmm. Well, actually here, I, I always tell people we're, our machinists are the most underpaid people in America. They're like, oh, no, they're not. And I go, yeah, they are. Because look, at just like the things we talked about, the stress of material. You know, you're a chemist, you're a scientist, you're a process engineer, you're, you're a cutting tool engineer. You, you, you got to know how to make the part. And it's like five things. And, you know, we're, these guys are making 20, maybe thirty dollars an hour yeah i mean in a plumber don't get me wrong plumber we need plumbers and electricians but i hear they're making 40 45 dollars an hour and they, you know they got a van full of tools and it yeah. just doesn't make no sense so, yeah yeah um, it's it's there's there's a lot of things that it, that that will definitely be changing i think in the manufacturing world over the next years obviously there has to be i mean the last two years showed us that listen, you can't have everything made at the cheapest point of labor in the world because that'll no. hurt. No. And, and then I don't think really in the U.S. they've ever gotten rid of the, the, the critical things out of the U.S., um, which is good. And it's the, the amount of people retiring now compared to the amount of people coming into manufacturing, I think, as you said, uh, is, is, and then the amount of people that are even available coming out of high schools is is going down. Uh, like like you were saying there too, is a thousand less people graduating out of forty two schools in a year. That's a lot. Yeah, it's, that's a lot. And and when you look at the the demand side of things, I mean we're we're now have the the millennials are bigger as a population than the baby boomers yep. and they're like in there, whatever it is. I was just reading something about this again. The other day I was talking about how they're getting into the house buying uh, age. That's why the housing shortage is, they said it might got, it might go on for quite a while just simply because they're, they're moving into the house buying age now. And uh, even though the, the baby boomers are moving out they're they're a bigger population. So like me being a, whatever it's called in between those two, whatever it's called, uh, you know, that was small compared to the two populations. And, and that is the people coming into to manufacturing. Now the, the millennials are a bit older than that. And the, the gen 
whatever they're calling today, you know, I don't know, keep up with Z, that. Long. I think it's Z, Z. Z. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, and uh, that they're they were thinking that you know they're going to be the next YouTube sensation or whatever. You know, <laughs> it, it's and and realistically, I mean, I've I've honestly this is from my my uh, my son's twenty two years old, right? And uh, I just had power go out for a second. Sorry. My son, it still stayed on, though. That was, that was freaky. I was like, everything went dead for a second. But but my son's 22 years old, right? He's got friends that, that are, uh, so he's, what is it, four years out of college or out of, out of high school? Um, yeah, he's got friends that are still still working jobs that they shouldn't be working four years out of college. And they could go down to the manufacturing places down yep. here and find a job that pays them better, that actually has benefits, that they don't have to work crappy, crappy hours. And it has a career path that they can actually make a life out of it. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, rather than working for somebody that's worried about paying, giving you enough hours that they're going to actually have to pay benefits and stuff like that, you know, and, and that's the thing that I always gets me fired up is like, man, there are so many more opportunities for people. And, and I'll say it about the four year schools. Don't go to a four year school. If you don't think that's really four year, don't go to a four year school for something that you're never going to get a job for yep. a job in. And, and, uh, but manufacturing, I, I'm glad to hear that people are talking with you about manufacturing, bringing awareness towards getting young people in manufacturing. I think the Cardinal, the Cardinal School example that, that you guys have had a lot to do with there locally is awesome. I, I hope that there's others that are taking note of it and, and maybe more, as you said, more schools participating in it because that that's what we need. The kids have to come in and take this over. We're not going to be around forever. No, I, I'm blessed. My average age here is 32 and yeah. I have 47 people. So very blessed. Um, but what's the, you know, what's the average industry age here for, for, for the, for, oh, for machining. oh, 50, I heard 59. The other yeah. Day. So See, you're, like, you're, uh, you're lucky because of the program that's in the work that you've been doing. Look at the difference that that's made. Yeah, that's 15 years in the making. So yeah. that's that didn't, didn't happen overnight. And you yeah. know, we have if people want to learn more about that, we have workshops how to do it. And and awesome. I, I strongly attend just attend one of them. It's really cool. I like the yeah. live ones. You can meet face to face, but the last yeah. two were virtual. Yeah. So. Yeah. So when when how would they learn more about that if they wanted to about your, your uh, just. Just contact me um, okay. or type up Cardinal Manufacturing. Very good. And, and we'll uh, we'll get you set up. I think, I'm not for sure when we're having the next one. I think it's October now. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Yeah, because it is it is something that um, companies should consider. I mean, because in an area you could band together with half a dozen companies, a dozen companies from a given region, and, and you could really power, power oh. the schools to – to to do two to do two things a you're going to create a stream of employees but you're going to give people which is more importantly a lifetime opportunity to do something they never would have thought about yeah and it's it's not that hard it's really it just takes a little time and that's the cool. yeah the benefits you get from it i mean I, I mean i'm just like a it's like a passion of mine i just get so excited when i get to see these kids and they get so excited because Nobody gives them attention. That's what kids want. The Gen Z wants attention and they want their input. So if anybody's out there wants to work, that's what they want. And yeah. And they're eager to learn. And yeah. Well, and, and some, some of the same people that, that would really thrive in this environment that you created in those schools are, like you said, some of the people that may not ever get attention other than, 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 than that. And that's a, that's a great thing. I just think, very cool what you're doing. Yeah, everybody's got a gift and talent, Damon. You just have yep. to help them find it. Yep. And once they do, you just let them go. Yep, they blossom. Like, yeah. Yep. Good stuff. Well, Matt, it's been awesome talking to you, man. I, I enjoy <laughs> our interactions around, and I, I just, man, uh, you're you're an inspiration in in how you're helping younger people find great careers in manufacturing. I really enjoy that. I, I love what you're doing in your, in your company. I mean, I can't even imagine the, the 
over the years, what that's been like, you know, the, the highs and the lows and the, just the, the things you've learned doing that. But it's, I'm thankful to be able to talk to you for a little bit here and, and thankful for you to be able to um, just share. So hopefully somebody, if they, if they want to go to Wisconsin and work in a machining shop and they've got the experience that they're going to talk to MRS machining, because I think you probably got some things that you need to get done there. Yeah. Yep. I do. <laughs> um, but yeah, we could go on for another hour if you really wanted to, but I understand. I appreciate everybody's time. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. And and we will again in, in the future, we'll get on and talk about something else that, that we, you know, we get under our, that we need to leave let out, I guess. But uh, I, I hope that the people that are listening today got to understand you know, more about you, more about the company, the MRS machining and the history and, and how you're helping people. And I was just happy that, that we could schedule the time. So Matt Goosey, MRS machining. Thanks so much for being here today. So if someone wants to get a hold of you, reach out to you on, on LinkedIn. Is that a good yep. spot? Yep. LinkedIn. It's just, it's Matt Goosey or just Google Matt Goosey and you'll, you'll find me. I'm seeing there you go. So, there you go. Awesome. Well, okay. So before we get off, how, when did you ever think that you were going to be able to say that? Just Google me and I'll come up. <laughs> oh, well, actually, <laughs> probably like in the last year, personally. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Cause you said that I was never, yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking about that. That's, that's a cool, that's awesome, Matt. Great. Yeah. Thanks so much for being here today. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. Everyone that's been listening, thanks so much for listening. Love it. Put your comments in. And uh, if you want to reach out to Matt, go ahead and reach out on LinkedIn and get him there. Thanks a lot, Matt. We'll be back again next week after a short holiday break. We're taking off this Thursday and next Tuesday. We're going to be back again next Thursday and uh, with more interesting people that we're trying to talk to. And, and today, I'll even say it for Matt, go Packers. Go Pack. There we go. <laughs>